Hey guys, you may be wondering where Meadowlark is. Don't worry, I just taught him how to chainsaw. He's outside right now, cutting down some trees. Don't worry, totally safe, he's wearing a helmet. Today, for our week four video, these are the things we're gonna cover. But before we begin, I'd like to show you how I'm probably going to be Parent of the Year. Here are some of the things that Meadowlark's been learning over the course of our social distancing. Meadowlark's learned all the usual things. How to avoid matching, strum a guitar, herd chickens, he's even learned language. Max! 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 Finally, he's becoming quite the artist, learning how to obsessively draw cat butts. Parent of the Year. Now let's get started with our lecture. Let's talk a little bit about your Transmedia Teachy, and I'll help you navigate the changes that are occurring. So I'm on the class webpage, and I'm going to go ahead and go to Tasks. And once I've clicked on Tasks, I'll go to Transmedia Teachy. And we'll scroll down. And a lot of this has changed. So the main thing that you're going to be responsible for is this lesson plan and the infographic. And I've got all the instructions for the infographic in this lesson plan template. So if you click on the template, I'll go ahead and download it, open it, and here's what you should see. Uh, so uh, what you get is you get a template. And as the teachers uh, for the week, uh, or for the day rather, you'll go ahead and fill this out and give me citations for the articles that you'll be uh, teaching the class on and then you have summaries of each article so there may be more than one summary here and also one more uh, more than one important section uh, but the summary uh, it's not your opinion it's just you summarizing the article in a fair way using signal phrases like the author writes uh, as the author suggests as blah argues um, so that's up to you uh, how to uh, do that but again it's no there's no opinion there um, it's not like this is a great article. Uh, the importance is where you get to uh, describe your opinion and explain why it's important. So uh, instead of why did you select the reading, uh, you can just talk about why the reading is important because you didn't get to select it uh, uh, this uh, this year. Um, so has it helped with our lives, future assignments, maybe in other classes? Has it helped with your assignments in this class? Be something that you explain. Uh, the instructional goals, these are the goals that the English department lays out uh, for their classes. So you want to select two of these goals and tell me how this you teach or how this article uh, and the reading and your smartening questions are going to meet these goals. So that's up to you. Um, and those goals can also connect with the infographic and what you're learning uh, about writing um, an infographic. Now the infographic is the last part and this is worth 10% of the grade. Um, so I have two options for the infographic. Uh, one is using PictoChart, the other is Genially, and we'll go over those in just a second. Uh, so the infographic that you'll be creating, uh, it'll have a title, it'll have a short thesis-driven paragraph, about two to five sentences, not many uh, words there, just telling us why this is an important reading for transmedia storytelling. It's a section illustrating new concepts, and then a section connecting new concepts to old concepts, right? So you could connect a new concept to something old that we've covered, like you know, writerly, readerly, producerly, that's up to you. And then I have a short conclusion section, two to five sentences again, and then a work cited. Now for the work cited, uh, cite the imagery, only the imagery that you've uploaded. Uh, if you find the imagery in its creative commons, I'm not going to worry about you having to cite it. Uh, but for the work cited, have the work cited of the articles that you're quoting, um, at least. And then I ask that you design the infographic yourself and don't use a template. Uh, finally, you'll post the smartening questions here. Now the infographic is due uh, the day before you give uh, your smartening so that I can post it and people can uh, access it. So this infographic is really going to be kind of like a Cliff's Notes for your class. So it's going to help you uh, explain these readings uh, to your classmates and help them uh, get the gist of what you think is important and help them understand the readings in a visual way. So I'm going to go ahead. heck is an infographic? Well, I'm going to go to cool infographics and show you what infographics are. Uh, 
So infographics are like uh, really engaging and entertaining sort of uh, content, ways to explain uh, things that may be more complicated or just a fun way to present uh, ideas. Uh, so you can see beards and face masks, masks rather, uh, is an example of a very visual based uh, uh, infographic. There are others, and yours is going to be maybe a little bit more text-based, but again, the idea is that you can illustrate uh, your concepts in ways that use chunking, cueing, filtering, and contrast and repetition like we covered in class. With this infographic, you can see how they're using uh, cueing of important data. So we've got the title here, uh, and then we've got the hierarchy. So this is less important, but it's still um, filtered and cued uh, the information. You can see all the uh, principles of design that we've covered in class uh, going on right here, visual way. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Picto chart now, Picto and chart. Gonna you get uh, five visuals uh, to make for free, and I'm going to create a new visual and show you some of the things that you can do. So I'll go ahead and click Create New, and Infographic, and remember, you don't want to use a template. Okay, so we're going to start from blank, and you'll be able to see a lot of the things you'll be able to access. So graphics, uh, again, you can uh, drag and drop, and it saves in the cloud, so you don't have to worry about uh, losing files. And again, I'm just clicking on graphics and dragging, and they have a photo library that you can drag and drop things. Uh, you can also uh, look at things that you've uploaded uh, as well, right here. And I've got a picture of me uh, teaching Metal Arc how to sit with some Tic Tacs. Okay. So again, it's just drag and drop. So those are the graphics, and you know, feel free to click on things. Uh, to figure out how you want to organize this. Uh, something that might be useful is a timeline. And you can see when you click on it, you get different options. So even though you don't have access to the templates, there are a lot of things that are template-like that you can add here and then add your own uh, information. Okay, uh, I'm going to keep going. So you can add backgrounds. That's up to you. Text is very much like Word. Uh, so you can select text frames. You can add titles, subtitles. Uh, body text, it's up to you. And then when you click on things, you'll be able to edit them. And you can see above, you've got uh, a word like uh, formatting right up here. Okay, so you can do a lot manipulating it. Color schemes, uh, that's not available, uh, but there are other tools that you can use, like add videos, charts, or maps. Uh, again, I encourage you to explore this. Uh, and if you have any questions, just let me know. You can also uh, Google. Uh, for answers, uh, if you have questions about how to use uh, Picto chart. Over the last several years, there's just been a non-stop barrage of movies from my childhood being remade, reimagined, sequeled, requeled, prequeled, whatever you can imagine. They're bringing the properties from my childhood back to the big screen. But that's led to a lot of confusion because people loosely use a lot of different terms that mean different things. So what I want to do is just talk about the difference between a reboot and a remake. They're not the same thing, but they're very similar, so let's talk about the difference. First, a remake is a recreation of a story that has been told before. The idea is that if you take a story with a certain set of characters, a certain set of plot points, a certain premise, and take that and tell it a second time. So Ben-Hur is a remake of several movies that have been made before, as well as a classic story that has been told many times before. Or coming up, The Magnificent Seven. That is a remake of a story that has been told before, and The Magnificent Seven is the remake of Seven Samurais, a specific story with specific types of characters told again. So if you were to remake Indiana Jones, that would have to be a retelling of the story, Raiders of the Lost Ark, or Temple of Doom, or Last Crusade. You would take that story with that character and remake that story. A reboot is when you restart the continuity for a character or a concept without necessarily retelling the same story. So consider Batman. Batman has been rebooted a number of different times where it's the same character with the same certain principles, the same rogues gallery, but they keep rebooting the continuity and it's not retelling the same story about the Joker. It's not telling the same story about Mr. Freeze. Though Mr. Freeze and the Joker might appear, it's the same characters with different stories and a different continuity. 
But the idea is, is that a remake retells a story and a reboot restarts over a continuity with specific characters or specific concept. So you think about something like Indiana Jones. If you don't want to retell Raiders of the Lost Ark, you can reboot Indiana Jones and tell new stories with a new actor in that role and just tell more adventures with Indiana Jones that aren't one of the previously told stories. Or with Sherlock Holmes, there's so many reboots, even right now that are currently going, of Sherlock Holmes, but they're not all remakes of each other, they're reboots of the character Sherlock Holmes. Now Sherlock Holmes gets confusing because something like a specific story like The Hound of Baskerville has been retold 30 times according to Wikipedia. So that is a remake of that story, but it's not necessarily a reboot of every version of it. It's not every time you tell that story it's rebooted. That's where these terms get a little bit confusing because one deals with characters and situations and concepts, one deals with specific stories where you're remaking a story versus rebooting a character or a concept. Now it gets even a little bit more confusing because not all reboots are equal in depth to which they reset the universe. So you have soft reboots where the story is reset but there are still ties to the previous continuity. So, for example, Star Trek 2009 is a whole reboot of Star Trek. However, they tied it back to the old continuity by having Spock Prime travel through time. So there's a realm or way in which this is still tied to the old Star Trek, but it's a totally new Star Trek. Or coming up in a few months, they're doing a soft reboot of 24. It's still connected to the continuity in the universe of the old TV series 24. However, this is a new set of characters and a new environment. And so it's a reboot, a soft reboot, because it's not totally resetting the universe. Then there are hard reboots. These are total resets of the continuity. So Batman Begins clearly is not a continuation of Tim Burton or Joel Schumacher's Batman. It's a new self-contained continuity that has been totally reset with no connections to the previous one. Sometimes it gets a little bit tricky to define exactly which one it is. So take Ghostbusters 2016. Different characters, different story, same premise. So it's essentially a reboot and it's essentially a remake, but it's kind of a mix of the both because it's kind of the same story, but it's different. Definitely a new continuity, but it's not clearly defined as a remake, even though it's kind of is really a remake of the original. So sometimes they kind of make it a little bit tricky to exactly define which type it is. Other times you have stories like Tarzan, which has been rebooted and remade countless times, but it's always not always clear which one it is. So you can easily remake the story of Tarzan and him being found by Jane and them following in love. That's a story that's been told before. Now The Legend of Tarzan doesn't do that. It reboots the story and tells a new story. So it's not a remake of that old story, but at the same time, the flashbacks have a remake of this story, but the story as a whole is just a reboot. So you can see where it gets a little bit confusing. Or take, for example, Star Wars The Force Awakens. Clearly not a reboot by any stretch of the imagination. It's a continuation of the story that we've had, just a new episode in this continuity. At the same time, the story is kind of a remake of episode four. Not explicitly, but you can see there's definitely a remake aspect of that in The Force Awakens, while not being a reboot in any way, shape, or form. It's telling a similar story that's tell with the same kind of plot beats, the same big blow up the Death Star at the end, while being within the same continuity. The reason I wanted to talk about this is because I believe that terms matter in having precise language to distinguish between two different things and not interchanging words that mean different things. It helps us to have deeper and more meaningful discussions about movies and stories and television when we know what we're saying. While reboot and remake sound the same, they're not. They mean different things and one deals with stories and the other deals with characters. And when you clearly define what you're talking about, it makes for much richer discussion and much more meaningful discussion when we can agree on our language and talk on the same terms and not just throw around, everything's a reboot, it's a continuation, well, it's a reboot, this sequel, it's a reboot. No, everything is in a reboot. A reboot is when there's some element of a new continuity, a new continuation, a new something, not just more of the same. And a remake is telling the same story again. It is remaking this story, whereas a reboot is rebooting this universe, this character.
If you like this video, please consider checking out this video right over here called When Does a Movie Bomb? where I talk about what is a movie bomb, a flop, trying to specify language once again. A bunch of people in the comment section appeared to have taken it as me defending the movie Ghostbusters, which I would now say definitely flopped, but check that video out if you're interested in kind of the intricacies of language and the distinctions of it like I did in this one about reboots and remakes. Thank you for watching this video. If you like it, please click that subscribe button. I would love to have you check out more videos and really, I don't want to just talk about movies. I want to talk with you about movies. So join us in the comment section. What do you think is the difference between a reboot and a remake? I want to hear what you have to say about that. Thank you for watching. See you next time.